get that fuel gushing out of there. I got my uh, level sensor in, oil level sensor. So that was the last part on the engine that I had to do. So I already drained the oil. The problem with the oil change on these cars is you really need that special large cap uh, filter wrench for this because there's absolutely no way, I don't know who, what the engineer was thinking here, but there's no way to get to this filter housing with a standard tool like I have. Well, I, I got to it, but uh, it requires a lot of swearing. So I think whoever changed the oil before never did the filter because you see this filter starting to collapse. The oil is, the oil still looks clean, but I don't think this filter was changed. I don't think they could get to this thing that they were doing this on their own. So that's kind of a shame. I got a new filter for it. We'll slap this together. And then we'll change that sensor out. Okay guys. So it's just two 10 mil bolts down here. To remove this uh, oil level sensor. And then we'll have to solder the new wire for it. And then we'll fill her up with oil. Oh, look at that. Still made a mess. <laughs> anyway, there she is. There's a new one. Pop her back in there. There's an o ring on it. So there's nothing really to worry about there. We will just do it by feel until the o ring compresses. The connector and then we'll have to solder up a new uh, lead to go all the way up to the part that I have grounded if you watch the other videos if we remember the lead I grounded just so I can get rid of the light and confirm that the sensor is bad I got a new lead soldered here shrink wrap on it I will cut it to length and we'll join it with the sensor. Okay guys, so I got the little thing soldered with a fresh wire. Now we're gonna put this in the little, into that little plastic casing and she's done. Can't test it till tomorrow because I have no fuel pump. Uh, but I don't see any reason why this shouldn't work. I also put it into a wire protector all the way from the top. All right, guys, I got all excited today. Weather is beautiful outside, sunny and warm. So I uh, put the plates on this thing. I was gonna go for a quick grip just to see how it performs before I do the oil change. Uh, and I took it out of the garage, drove it around the block here came back and I smelled this really bad smell of fuel and then I looked underneath the car as it was running and it was just gushing fuel out of the fuel pumps so I'm hoping this is just a bad mechanic that didn't put the clamps on properly I'm hoping it's not anything to do with the fuel pumps which were replaced when I bought the car I was told the fuel pumps were replaced so we'll have to jack this rear end up and have a look underneath and see before we go on a maiden voyage here. Okay, so I'm underneath here to remove this cover to get to the fuel pumps. You got one, two, three holes here and three 10 millimeter nuts on top. And the cover comes off and then you can expose the filter and the fuel pump, which were replaced. But, so first of all, not the correct clamps. 
this clamp is loose and the biggest issue is this is supposed to be screwed together and they probably couldn't get it there's supposed to be a long screw that goes through here a long bolt that probably squeezes these together couldn't get it in so just left it like that your hacks so we'll have a look see and, and see what the hell is up here get that fuel gushing out of there yeah, absolutely the biggest hack job that I've ever seen. Uh, so the fuel is actually coming out of here. It doesn't look like this brass washer was even crushed. So I think this is the problem here. Or maybe this, this washer is not even supposed to be there. Once I take it apart, I'll see. Of course, uh, shut down or disconnect your battery when you're doing something like that. But I mean, Jesus Christ, this, this hose was cut with looks like it was just ripped so we'll fix all this up put it together properly and hopefully this solves our 30 dollars of fuel wasted problem okay guys so i figured out why this uh, fuel pump was leaking whoever the genius was that mounted the fuel pump put a the the hose was just sitting on top of this there's not supposed to be a hose there there's supposed to be a banjo connection so with these what i figured is what i figured out is there is an upgrade to the fuel pump design and i think the new fuel pump design doesn't use the breather or vice versa i don't know i haven't figured that out yet i'm just taking a breather because this is pissing me off uh, so basically, I either need to get a new fuel pump for this car, or I need to go to Mercedes tomorrow and see if I can get this banjo to hose connection for this uh, outlet tube. So yeah, they had a hose sitting on here with a clamp. I don't even know how this car ran because the clamp would have been sitting over top of these holes. So, yeah, anyway. All right, guys, to take this cover off, to get to the plug, there's these three clips here. Obviously, you gotta remove the, the carpet liner first, trunk liner, and then this pops up. And under here, this is your plug-in for your fuel pump. Okay guys, so this fuel pump situation is a little bit more complicated than I thought. I have to replace this fuel pump. I cannot find the actual banjo bolt connection for the old style fuel pump. I'll explain to you in a, in a second here what that means. Uh, I couldn't find this fuel pump anywhere. I want this car out of this garage. It's basically ready to go, except for that freaking fuel pump thing, which I thought that was the only thing I never checked because I was told it was replaced. So I looked far and wide, nothing available locally. This is Canada. Uh, Mercedes told me 620 bucks for this fuel pump and three weeks away from Germany. And I looked online, obviously Amazon has the fuel pumps that I need. Bosch, aftermarket Chinese, whatever. Nothing Amazon Prime, so I can't get anything here within the next week. So I got one from the wrecker, guaranteed to work. I tested it, it works. I got the whole assembly. I'll just change the fuel filter because uh, I had a brand new one on mine. Obviously this came from a wrecker, so I don't want to reuse that filter. Kind of a shame, I'm already down there, but the fuel pump is so easy to replace. It's literally a 20 minute job, jack the car up, that if I ever have to do it again, I, ex I know exactly what, what I have to do here, so. Okay, so this is basically what was in the car. This fuel pump here, from what I gather, is the correct fuel pump, but it, it was updated sometime mid-year in 1995. So when my serial number pulls up, it specifies the updated fuel pump already. When they got this brand new fuel pump, whoever did this, they probably never gave them the serial number and they got the old style fuel pump. 
Uh, this is a little cheaper, so they probably thought they got away, you know, scot-free. But the problem with this fuel pump is that it has one inlet, one outlet. This is a check valve. And over here, you need a banjo bolt connection to your fuel filter. The car is not designed like that. I, I suppose, I think you can install these uh, in the newer design from what I read, but you need to plug off the tank, something, something, something rather. If you guys know, comment below. But anyway, so what these, what this mechanic, and I use that term loosely, this person should never work on cars again. Uh, what he did is he put this connection here Instead of a banjo bolt, he just slid this freaking hose right over top of this and put a clamp on here. So if you look at this, I mean, this is a check valve. This clamp was probably sitting right over top of this. So as soon as the pressure got too big, it, it basically wanted to tear this whole assembly apart. It's unbelievable. Some people should not work on cars. If this was you, if you're watching this video, don't touch cars, get into finance or work at McDonald's. Okay, this is dangerous. There's, there's places where you can cut corners. The fuel system is not one of them. Anyway, got my rant out of the way. Uh, see, and it's got these two connectors here, which are incorrect for this car too. They actually modified this to fit this pump, which is ridiculous. But anyway, so this is the wrecker one that's guaranteed to work. Uh, I got the whole bracket with it, which is nice. I'm gonna try and pop this uh, screw out here. That way it's gonna be correctly done as opposed to what you saw under the car. As you see, this fuel pump here has an inlet, an overflow or a pressure uh, relief and an outlet. So it's got three actual fuel connections whereas this one's got only two there's no check valve on this one it doesn't look like well, it doesn't look like there's a check valve i think what happens is somewhere internal maybe i don't know i don't know if you guys know comment below i don't have the service manual for this car so anyway we'll clean this sucker up see this is the proper connection i showed you how to take that out it uh, mounts in the trunk there's nothing that, need to be, that needs to be done here. So we'll clean the sucker up, separate it, replace this filter, and we'll put this back in. Now this connection here goes into the fuel tank. I think it's an overflow or overpressure uh, connection. Not sure how this fuel pump works without that. Uh, pressurizes, check valve holds the pressure. And I'm, I'm not sure, if you know, comment below, like I said. So this in my car was actually plugged off by whoever did this. Otherwise, because there was no place to connect an overflow hose to. So that was plugged off. So we'll see if we can get this rectified. Uh, hopefully it works. I tested the fuel pump, it's very easy. Plug in 12 volts to, to these, doesn't matter which way you plug them in, it'll just turn one way or the other. Uh, it works, pressure right up. I put this uh, inlet tube into some fuel, pressured up, squirted gas, good. It was quiet, no whining. Okay guys, pump assembly is all cleaned up, new filter is on. Use proper clamps. These are fuel injection clamps. Not very expensive. Don't use these pieces of junk. So everything is on. Now the only thing we have to do is unplug the, where this goes to into the fuel tank. We need to unplug that in the fuel tank and install this sucker. And hopefully she works. Okay, so this is what this looks like without the fuel pump in place. As you can see, this is the intake for the fuel. This is the one that goes to the engine here. And I think this is the overflow. I just popped the cap off. 
because this was capped. So I'm hoping this wasn't capped for a reason. I don't know. We'll just have a look and see. As you can see, I, I coat everything that I take apart with uh, uh, graphite grease. It just protects everything. Makes it look much better too. Okay guys, coming in from underneath so you can see where this is actually located. So my new old pump and the new filter is in. Everything is tidied up. So we're gonna attempt to fire this beast up. Okay, moment of truth. I think this thing is out of gas. I think all the gas actually <laughs> spilled out yesterday. Laugh out loud. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Come on, bud. Oh, there we go. But look at that, my oil light is still on after my freaking oil sensor replacement. No way. No way. Anyway, the car is running. Oh yeah. Okay guys, so since I had the fuel pump torn apart and all that, I decided uh, I'm gonna fix the fuel pump or the water pump as well. I think it's the water pump anyway, the little squeak that was coming from the front, uh, it came back. I think it's the water pump. So we'll replace the water pump. I'll show you guys uh, how this is all mounted in here. So nothing really to this. Uh, just four bolts hold the water pump in place and obviously all the hoses and, and stuff have to be separated. But you don't have to take the fan off, the clutch fan. The belt's gotta come off and the fan shroud we took off as well. Okay guys, to remove this shroud, there's just two, two clips on top here. And on the bottom there's two little slots that it sits in. There's nothing to remove on the bottom, it just pulls straight out. And then the other part of it, this one here, clips on. So now I'm gonna be forced to wash this engine inside my garage with no sump because I can't drive it to the car wash anymore since I have this ripped apart. I don't want to put it back together dirty. So this is the old unit. There is a consi there's considerable play in this as well as it doesn't spin very smoothly anymore. So I'm pretty sure it's the water pump. Otherwise we'll have to... I checked all the other pulleys. Um, there's They spin freely and there's no noise coming from them. Uh, the air conditioner pulley seems to be nice and smooth as well so I'm, that's this is the only thing that's left. I also have a, a new thermostat for this. We'll replace the thermostat. The only problem I have with the new pump is as you see is, is exactly the same. Everything is pointing the right direction. Everything is the same except for this one port here. This one the casting is plugged and this one has been opened. So I'm assuming this pump probably fits other vehicles as well. Uh, I couldn't find the brass plug for it, so I got a, a anodized steel one. I had to cut it off because it was too long. 
Uh, we'll put some um, we'll put some silicone or gasket maker on this. I also have a crush washer, aluminum crush washer. We'll plug this today. We'll wash the engine, and we'll put this thing back together, and hopefully that little squeak will go away. Okay, guys. So I got the pump in. It's a very straightforward job. Nothing really to it, but. You have to you know, wiggle stuff around to get to all these bolts. So there's four bolts. This is the front one of the pump on the top. And on the other side, there's one that you can't really see. And on the bottom, there's two. So that was kind of a pain in the butt because you kind of just got to do it by feel. And then the biggest issue was the belt routing without having the fan removed. It was kind of a pain. Uh, yeah, so we'll just continue on. I just got to plug in the hoses and stuff and start filling her up. But overall, a very straightforward job. Just got to take your time, be patient. I did wash the engine as well. Get rid of all that old grime underneath the, the pump and stuff. So the, to put the shroud back in, it's the reverse of taking it apart but this uh, circular part goes in first so it can clear the fan blade okay this will go in first and now it'll sit over top of the fan while we slide this this second part in here now the second part will have, so this is the orientation in which it goes in. There's a little clip here for the circular part of the shroud and there's two tabs that have to sit in notches on the bottom. You probably have to go underneath and line them up when you're putting this together. Same with this shroud. There's little notches here that have to sit inside these. So make sure you align these properly on the bottom when you're putting this back in because it might rub on the fan blade later. All right, all back together. I think I showed the procedure for filling this in one of the other videos, but anyway, I think it's self-bleeding. Uh, bleed it uh, just like any other car. Pump the hose as the engine is running. Make sure the heater is on full blast, full heat max temperature I mix it uh, just over 50 50 I actually put 60% coolant 40% deionized water it's nice to mix them in these uh, transparent containers that the water comes in mix it in here pour it keep running and in the morning you can check the level and make sure it's good so now we're gonna do the first start and make sure that this sucker actually Hey guys, everything seems to be quiet. I'll wait for it to warm up. It's always a risk. Mercedes, older Mercedes, older BMWs, when you pressure wash anything under the engine, and then anything up to electrical connections, these older electrical connections, you might have issues. It's gonna fire it right up. Okay guys, looks like this week is just full of fails. I don't think we're going to finish this project this week. Check this out. This radiator was not leaking before. It must have been just on the cusp. Yeah, there it is. We're getting a new radiator. Okay guys, so it looks like I'm gonna have to make another episode because obviously I was not able to get this done. In this part, as you can, as you, as you saw, it was a terrible, terrible week. Uh, everything went wrong this week. Fuel pump, uh, the sensor is still not working even though it's brand new. And in the end, after all this work, I gotta tear this uh, whole front end apart anyway, so take the rad out. What I think happened to the rad is, is you know, old coolant was caked in there. Once I flushed the coolant and I 
and I kept flushing and pumping it through, I think whatever corrosion there was in that rad uh, basically came through, got flushed out and started leaking a little bit. Doesn't leak much. I can actually drive the car, but it got cold again. So I'm not dealing with this. Uh, the rad is on order. It's coming next week. We'll tear into this, make another video on how to replace that radiator. And hopefully we can properly bleed this and take this for its maiden voyage. Do it next week.